Well, welcome back to our course on system engineering. We're going to be talking about decision analysis and support. And so just to give this the context that where we're at, we're getting close to be finishing up this first of three major sections. We have the introduction with the foundations. And so now we're just focusing on details of concept development. And with this chapter, we're going to be talking about a lot of things that are useful of how we actually turn these into decision quality type of information that we can be using as we're developing our design. So let's go ahead and start with an uh, introduction and thinking about decision making. So the preceding chapters have described the multitude of decisions that system engineers must make during the life cycle of a complex new system. It was seen that many of these involve highly complex technical factors and uncertain consequences, such as incomplete requirements, immature technology, funding limitation, and other technical and programmatic issues. Two of the strategies that have been devised to aid in the decision process are the application of the system engineering method and the structuring of the system life cycle into a series of defined phases. So in terms of decision making, um, it, it comes in a variety of forms and within numerous contexts. Moreover, everyone engages in decision making almost continuously from the time they wake up until the time they fall asleep. But simply not every decision is, is the same, nor is there a one size fits all process for making decisions. Certainly the decision regarding what you eat for breakfast is not on par with decisions whether to, to build a nuclear power plant. Decision making is not independent of its context. In this chapter, we will explore decisions typically made by the system engineer in the development of complex systems. Thus our decisions will tend to contain complexity in their own right. They are the hard decisions that must be made. Typically, these decisions will be made under levels of uncertainty. The system engineer will not have all of the information needed to make an optimal decision. Even the quality of information, the decision maker may not be able to process and integrate the information before a decision is required. Well, let's get into more details about the decision-making process, and um, we'll get a chance to be thinking about that in the context of this figure. So simple decision-making typically requires nothing more than some basic information intuition. For example, deciding what one will have for breakfast requires some information, what food is available, what cooking skill level is available, and how much time one has. The output of the simple decision is the food that is to be prepared, but complex decisions require more input, more outputs, and much more planning. Furthermore, information that is collected needs to be organized, integrated, or fused, and presented to decision makers in such a way as to provide adequate support to make good decisions. So in this figure, we're showing a simplified decision process for complex decisions, um, a more detailed process will be presented later in the chapter, as well as this lecture. So obviously, this appears to be rather cumbersome. However, how much time, energy, and the level of resource commitment devoted to each stage will be dependent on the type, complexity, and scope of the decision required. Formal decisions typical in large governmental acquisition programs may take years, while component decisions for a relatively simple system may require only a few hours or less. Each stage requires a finite amount of time. Even making the decision is not necessarily instantaneous. For example, if more than a single person must make and approve the decision, the stage may be quite lengthy. If consequences, consensus is required, then the this stage may become quite involved and would include political considerations as well as technical and programmatic. Regardless of the type of decision or the form in which the decision will be made, there are many factors that must be considered to initiate and complete, the, that is the planning stage. So what are the factors in the decision-making process? 
complex decisions require an understanding of the multidisciplinary of the process before an appropriate and useful decision can be made. So the following factors need to be considered as part of the planning stage. First, the goals and objectives. Before making decision, one needs to ask, what are the goals and objectives of the stakeholders? The, these will probably be different at different levels of the organization. The goals of a line supervisor will be different than a program manager, which holds the higher priority. And what are the goals of management above the decision maker? The decision should be made to satisfy, as far as possible, the goals and objectives of the important stakeholders. There's the decision type. The decision maker needs to understand the type of decision required. Many bad decisions stem from a misunderstanding about the, the type required. Is it a is the decision binary? Maybe the decision is con concerned with a permission of some sort. And in these cases, a simple yes or no decision is required. Other binary decisions may not be yes or no, but a choice between two alternatives, make or buy, being a classic one. More complex decisions typically involve one or more choices among a set of alternatives. Lastly, the decision maker needs to understand who and what will be affected. Is the decision purely technical or is there a personnel element? Providing the wrong type of decision will certainly lead to significant negative um, consequences. In the same vein, understanding who needs to be included in the decision is vital. Is this decision to be made by an individual or is it a consensus among a group required? Who needs to approve the decision before it is implemented? The answer to these questions influences when and how decisions are will be made. Then in terms of the decision context, understanding the scope of the decision is also essential to make an appropriate decision. A global or enterprise-wide decision will be much different than a system component decision. The consequences of a wrong decision will be far reaching if the decision affects the enterprise, for example. Context involves understanding the problem or issue that led to a decision point. This will be difficult since context has many dimensions leading to different goals and objectives for your decision maker. Here are the list. So technical in, in involving physical entities such as subsystem decisions, financial involving investment instruments and quantities, personnel involving people, process involving business and technical procedures, methods and techniques, programmatic involving resource allocations, including time, space, and funding, temporal, meaning the, the time frame in which a decision is needed. This may be dynamic. And finally, legacy involving past decisions. So in this table, we're showing a decision framework that talks about the, the types of decision, the, the scope of control. And so you can get a chance to get that perspective. Um, let me go on and continue with the factors in the decision-making process. And I think this table will be illustrative of some of that. So first of all, continuing with the stakeholders. Stakeholders can be defined as anyone, people or organizations who will be affected by the result of the decision. Understanding who the stakeholders are with respect to a decision needs to be established before the decision is made. Many times this does not occur Stakeholders are not recognized before a decision is made. Yet once a decision is announced or implemented, we can be sure that all who are affected will make their opinion heard. Concerning legacy de decisions, um, understanding what relevant decisions have made been made in the past helps with a, a, both the context and the environment in which the current decision must be made. Consequences and stakeholders can be identified more readily if the decision maker has knowledge of the past. Then there's uh, supporting data. Um, finally, necessary so support data for the decision needs to be provided in a timely fashion. A coherent and timely data collection plan is needed to ensure proper information can be gathered to support the decision accurately, um, the, the decision. Accuracy in data collection is dependent on the decision type and context. Many times decisions are delayed 
unnecessarily because greater accuracy than needed was demanded before the decision maker could act. In terms of the decision framework, um, as discussed above, understanding the type of decision need, needed is critical in planning for the exec executing any process. Several decision frameworks are available in the literature to assist in understanding the decision types. And as we see in this table that I briefly mentioned before, we present a framework that is a combination of several. There are many ways to categorize decisions or categorize Categorization focuses on three types of decisions, structured, semi-structured, and unstructured. So let's talk about those one at a time. So for structure, these types of decisions tend to be routine in that the context is well understood and the decision scope is known. Supporting information is usually available and minimal organization or processing is necessary to make a good decision. In many cases, Standards are available either globally or within an organization to provide solution methods. Structured decisions have typically been made in the past, thus the decision maker has a historical record of similar or exact decisions made that like the one he is facing, he or she is facing. Then there's semi-structured. These types of decisions fall outside of routine, although similar decisions may be made, have been made, circumstances are different enough that past decisions are not clear, are not a clear indicator of the right decision choice. Typically guidance is available through, though even when specific methods are not, many system engineering decisions fall into this category. And then we have unstructured. Unstructured decisions represent complex problems that are unique and typically one um, one time. Decisions regarding new technologies tend to fall into this category due to the lack of experience or knowledge of the situation. First time decisions fall into this category. As experience grows and decisions are tested, they may transition from an unstructured decision to a semi-structured category. In addition to this type, there's a scope of control is important to recognize. Decisions within each, each scope are, are structured differently have different stakeholders and require different technology to support. Then we're gonna look at these other things here. We have the, the operational, managerial and strategic. So for the operational, this is the lowest scope of control that system engineering is concerned about. Operational control is at the practitioner level, the engineers, analysts, architects, testers, et cetera who are performing the work. Many decisions at this scope of control involve structured or semi-structured decisions. Heuristics, procedures, and algorithms are typically available to either describe in detail when and how decisions should be made or at least provide guide, guidelines to decision makers. In rare cases, when new technologies are implemented or a new field is explored, unstructured decisions may arise. Then there's managerial. The scope of control def defines the primary level of system engineering decision making, that of the, the chief engineer, the program manager, and of course, a systems engineer. The scope of control de defines the management, mentoring, or coaching level of decisions. Typically for semi-structured decisions, policies, heuristics, and logical relationships are available to guide the system engineer in, in these decisions. Then there's strategic planning. This level of control represents an executive or enterprise level control. Semi-structured decisions usually rely on causality concepts to guide decision makers and decision making. Additionally, investment decisions and, and decisions under uncertainty are typically made at this scope of, of control level. <clears throat> 